going on, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy Far Rock 22M, aka Infamous Owen, Infamous underscore Owen on IG. Yo, man, I'm gonna. This is a story, basically, not even a story, more like reminiscent. Now, this video was not gonna be for everybody, but you can still enjoy it. Now, for those who grew up in the 90s, you know what I'm saying? Grew up in the 80s in New York City summertime. Um, some of you might be aware of what they, a program that used to be called the Fresh Air Fund. They still have the Fresh Air Fund. Now, the Fresh Air Fund is a program that consists of two types of uh, going away. It's basically, um, you have a summer camp and you have what they call Friendly Town. Now, Friendly Town is a, is a program where you go away with a family for maybe about two weeks. Normally, they send you out of state. They send you to places like Connecticut, Maine, you know, Vermont, make you go stay with a family. And, you know, you see what life is like in a different part of town, you know. And uh, I ain't going to lie, man. I know the logo has changed, but this right here, that's the real Fresh Air Fun. That, that's, this is Fresh Air Fun. If you got this T-shirt, you a G. Straight up, man. So... If you went to the Fresh Air Fun uh, Fresh Air Fund program in New York, chances are you went to um, like let's say if you went to camp, you went to camp in Fishkill. So chances are you went to Camp Hayden Marks, Camp Pioneer, Camp Mariah. If you're a female, you went to Camp ABC, and they and I believe they had uh, Camp Hidden Valley. Hidden Valley. I believe was for uh, disabled people and, uh, you know, people that weren't disabled, but that's what Cam Hayden Valley was for. Cam Hayden Marks was for like, for kids from like nine to about 12. Camp Pioneer was kids from about 12 to 15 or 16, I believe. I believe it was 12 to 15. And then uh, Cam Hayden, I um, can't, ABC was uh, a, a female camp, girls camp. So it was like from nine to 15, you know, that was the only camp. And Camp Mariah, I'm not sure. I think Camp Mariah was probably the same, like nine to 15, but I don't know anyone who went to Camp Mariah. And Mariah Carey, I believe, uh, owns that camp. I'm not sure, but I heard that she used to come at the end of the summer or at the end of the program, at the end of the session, you know, pay the camps, campus a visit. Now, Camp Pioneer doesn't exist anymore. I went to Camp Pioneer two years in a row. I went there summer 97, and I went there summer 98. And boy, I tell you, I had some great times there, good times at that camp. Now, you know, I'm not going to lie to you. I don't know what it's like now, but if it's sort of the same way it is now, I would tell you, send your kid there. Send your kid there. You know, 11, 12, 13 years old, send them to camp for the summertime. We only went there for about two weeks, so it's not so crazy. But um, it definitely gets a, a a boy out of his zone. Now, you know what I'm saying? I ain't going to front. Like, it's not like the camps you see on TV. You know, it's it's like the camps you see on TV, but they don't it don't really look like the camps you see on TV. You know, this is a, this was a camp for poor people. It's just I'm gonna be real with you. you know, I don't know if it was funded right, but you know, uh, there was only like one set of cabins that actually was decent, but you know, uh, all right, let, let, let me explain how Camp Pioneer is run. You know what I'm saying? So you got kids that's from all five boroughs, you know, Manhattan, Staten Island, Queens, Brooklyn, Bronx. So, um, and they all come from the inner cities and a lot of them are poor. A lot of us are poor and we went to this camp, you know, so. 12 to 13, summer 97. Now, New York was New York was was great back then. But I remember uh going to camp. Um that's when I, you know, started really going to meet people from different neighborhoods, different parts of the city. You know, um my first year at camp, I was 12 years old. I just turned 12, summer 97. So um, you know, and now the way the camp is set up, right? The camp is named after like uh, like your tribes. Like it's like about say maybe about twelve to fourteen kids per tribe, 
Now these tribes are named after old Indian tribes, old ancient tribes. My first year I stayed in uh I stayed in I was uh, I was in Onondaga. That was the name of my tribe, Onondagas. You know, I believe it's pronounced Onondaga, but Onondagas. My second year I was uh I was an Inca. You know, they got the Incas, they got the Aztecs. Um they get they had they had a they had a tribe, Bambara Knights, they had Zulu, they had Zulu Kings, they had um they had something, I think Cayuga, Seneca. They had a lot of villages. Some of these, uh, some of these tribes were actually named after these towns in New York, and probably some of these towns in New York were named after these tribes. I don't really know the sequence of it, but that's how that's how it was. So my first year I was in Onondaga. Hmm. Excuse me. So I ain't gonna lie, man. When I first left. I didn't really want to go to camp, you know what I'm saying? I, I I didn't know what it was like to be away from my family, you know, for that amount of time, you know. And I went with my brother. My brother was about two years older than me. So it wasn't so bad. I was with my brother, but, of course, he went to a different tribe. I was in a different tribe. So, um, but I'm not going to lie to you, man. I met a lot of good friends. I met a lot of good people, and it's crazy that I never got up with none of those people that I went to camp with. So, you know, my first year, I was in Onondaga. I was 12 years old, you know what I'm saying? And um, my cabin had about like six kids in it, you know what I'm saying? So if I could remember correctly, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to try to remember their names and where they was from. You know, it's been so long. So hopefully one of these dudes see that, you know what I mean? Shout out to y'all. So um, one, of my good, one of my good friends in that cabin, I had two good dudes that I used to really hang with every day. You know, everybody hung with each other. We all did stuff, but you know, you always got those one or two people that you just converse with all the time. So the first year I went, um, we had a few dudes from Queens in my cabin. I remember we had a lot of dudes from Queens and we had a lot of dudes from Uptown, um, meaning Harlem and the Bronx. That, I'm going to put Uptown as that. I didn't. I don't think we had any Brooklyn cats in my um, cabin uh, my first year. I can't remember, but my first year... Um, all right, so I'm gonna start with my man Greg. My man Gregory. Gregory was from um Linden Boulevard. He probably was from St. Albans, I believe. Because we all took uh we all exchanged addresses and numbers at the end of the session. But Gregory, light skinned dude, he had braids, light brown, light brown braids, he had a little funny little voice. Yo, what's up? You know what I mean? He was um he was like two years older than me. I think he was like uh 13 going on 14. Um you know what I'm saying? Cool dude. That was my dude from Queens. So we always used to kick it. We had a dude named Ricky. I, mind you, I was the youngest kid in my cabin. You know what I'm saying? Everybody else was like 13 and up. I was the only one that just turned 12. So, you know, um, that was something. So, um, you know, I had my man Ricky. He was a little short kid, a little fro. I think he was Jamaican or something like that. And I, here's my other dude, my man Terrell. Terrell was from the Bronx. Terrell was from Gun Hill. He, I think he was like Trini. Or Guyanese, I don't know what he was, but he had that like that Indian coolie kind of look to him. Could have been, and he probably had some black in him too. You know what I'm saying? But he he kind of looked more on the Indian side. You know what I'm saying? Rel was a cool dude. Rel, he 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 had he had a little heart to him. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, just like I said, this is the first time I seen people from different neighborhoods acting a certain way. Cause I always thought like, you know, far rockaway dudes was like the hardest, cause you know. That's where I'm from, and that's what that's what I knew at the time. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I'm 12 years old. I'm I get out of my neighborhood, but I wasn't getting around other people my age. So, Terrell was I think it was already in high school. You know what I'm saying? He was already talking about sex and all this other stuff. You know what I'm saying? And what he was doing with chicks. I'm like, damn, man. But um, but he used to you know school me and things like that. So, and we had this other kid on uh, Randall. Randall was from Staten Island. This is the first time I met a dude from Staten Island. You know what I'm saying? He was he was older than me. He was probably like uh 14, you know, going on 15. Randall, tall dude, you know, beanhead kind of guy. He was a cool dude. And um that's who I oh, and we had Kenny. Kenny was from Harlem. We used to call him Tigger. You know what I'm saying? Kenny, I think he was I think he was a low. You know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, he was low. He used to wear that blue flag every now and then up in there. You know what I'm saying? Um and he was a cool dude, you know what I'm saying? Funny guy, but he a cool dude. You know, he tried to play tough the first couple of days, but you know what I'm saying? Eventually, all that tough guy shit wear off. You know, when you 
when you're around us when you around certain people we get to really know you but he he wasn't no punk but he wasn't as tough as he displayed himself to be you know what i'm saying like it was kind of like an act i guess for defense but whatever you know like i said we young you know what i'm saying so we young we away from our surroundings we away from our block we ain't around nobody like you'll be lucky if you bump into a kid from your neighborhood you know what i'm saying because when i my first year um there was another kid from far rockaway no there was two kids from far rockaway i just happened to know one of them because i seen him at my junior high school the other kid my brother knew because he went to his junior high school which was 198 so let's get into it so um you know, like I said, um, now the counselors, the counselors is like, believe it or not, like they regular dudes from the hood, a lot of them. If they're not dudes from the hood, a lot of times they like, uh, they're like immigrants. You know, I guess like exchange students or people just coming here on a work visa and they work at these programs. So we had a couple of people from like Eastern Europe. We had a couple of those counselors. And um, we had, like I said, dudes from the hood, like real real dudes from the hood like you want to fight all right y'all get the one you know what i'm saying they they understand us so it was it was definitely a, a experience right so my counselors i really can't remember their names i remember one dude named though um it was this cat named domingo domingo was dominican now domingo was the dude like he was a funny guy you know but he 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 didn't joke often like but you knew he was funny but he didn't joke often domingo was like he was like a kind of like a no-nonsense kind of guy he could take a joke but he was really like a no-nonsense kind of dude you know what i'm saying and um like he he ain't played with you but you know what i'm saying you can you could kick it with domingo you know what i'm saying domingo was from the hood i say this right domingo if i was running a drug operation Domingo would probably be my lieutenant. You know what I'm saying? He's like, that's, yeah, that's, how, that's how cool, but that's how, you know, serious he was. That's how hands-on he is. But anyway, i never forget, um, Domingo got into an a, a argument. And I wouldn't even say an argument. It was like a back and forth with some jokes. One of the counselors called him Flamingo. And, you know, like I said, these are older cats. So we watching it as kids. And he's telling him, he's like, yo, I really don't like it when you call me Flamingo. You know, you keep playing with me. I'm going to show you something. So, yeah, all right, Flamingo, all right, Flamingo. So, um, now, Domingo was like, all right, cool. So, Domingo came up with a plan. He told us, he's like, yo, listen, when we see him at dinner, you know, I'm going to learn, I'm going to yell out, hey, sperm lip, you know what I'm saying, to this other Spanish cat. And, uh, and y'all going to repeat right after me. You know, what? <laughs> so we went to dinner. And we run it up. And the dude like, yo, Flamingo. He's like, all right, yo. Hey, spam lip. And then imagine you got like 14, 15, 16 other kids like, hey, spam lip. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So after a while, we, we did it for like two days. Domingo comes to us and say, all right, that's enough. You know, dude pulled me to the side and say, yo, listen, man, I don't. I don't like the way you had the kids doing that. You know, I I, I respect you. I'm not going to let that happen again. So, you know what I mean? Domingo played this game and, you know what I'm saying, and he won. But I ain't going to lie. Every night we did an activity. But let's get to the food. Let me tell you something. Before I got to camp, I didn't want to go because I'm a very picky eater. I'm a very picky eater. But I'm going to tell you something. The food at that camp? Oh, my God. This was like the... Oh, my God. I thought it was going to be like school lunch, honestly. Yo, whoever cooked that food made it with a lot of love. That food was like at home cooking. The fried chicken, the rice, the hamburgers, everything. The only thing I didn't really care for was the breakfast. You know what I'm saying? The breakfast kind of sucked. The... the the waffles taste like rubber sometimes, but I'll eat the fruit and, you know what I'm saying, I'll you probably eat some of the cereal, some of the dry cereal, whatever. But lunch and dinner? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And it's, it is all you can eat, really. All you can eat. You know what I'm saying? So every night we did an activity after dinner. You know, um, 
We 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 did things. We'll swim. You know, we'll play sports. My favorite one was the gold rush. Now, like I said, you know, a lot of people ain't going to relate to this. You know what I'm saying? But the ones that do, drop a comment. Let me know. So we had an event called the Gold Rush, right? The Gold Rush is what it sounds like. You know, we're looking for gold. So what the counselors did, they spray painted rocks gold and scattered them throughout the camp. So what they established, what they set up was like, uh, like you know, basically you go find these, these gold, the gold, but you're like criminals. So they got fake cops walking around. They got a jail and, you know, they lock you up. So some of these counselors play like cops. And chase you around or whatever. But here's the thing, though. It's like free reign. So everybody's out to get gold. But guess what? I could take somebody else's gold if I want to. So, you know, they was allowing, like, rough playing. So people was getting jumped for their gold. People was getting raw for their gold, beat up for their gold. You know what I'm saying? And if you got caught by one of the counselors, they'll take you to jail. And you had to have a gold bar to bail your man out. So it, it was crazy. But the reason why they did a gold rush... Because out of all the gold we collect, they have an auction towards the end of the session. And that gold is credited towards the points that you have to spend. Like, it's like your money. And everybody in the auction, like your, your whole group, we agree on something. They always, like at the auction, they'll bring out like a mystery box. It'll be like a box wrapped up. It could be a big box, small box. But everybody's bidding on it, you know, by the points that you have. So you don't know what you're going to get in those boxes. Like, this is the time when they teach you, like, teamwork and how to agree on things. So, you know, we all, like, you know what I'm saying, the auction night, you know what I'm saying? We all, like, yo, we're going to bid on that big box. You bid on that big box, and then all of a sudden, it's like a bag of marshmallows in there. You're like, oh, come on. Like, I remember sometime, I remember one time, these dudes, they bidding on this big old box, and we fell back. We like, nah, we're not going to bid. Come to find out, it was just a box of toilet paper. You know what I'm saying? Like, shit like that. And you might end up bidding on something, you get a pack of hamburgers. So you know you and your team, y'all going to cook out tonight. Y'all going to start that fire on the wood, and y'all going to cook out. You know what I'm saying? But we did swimming events, um, football events, sports events. We did all kinds of stuff at that camp. Oh, not to mention, we did a 14-mile hike. A 14-mile hike in the woods. And you want to hear something more crazy? That 14 miles we walked was to the camp right next door. We just took the long way around the woods. But literally, we walked 14 miles just to go to the camp right next door. Ain't that crazy? That 14-mile walk was maybe about eight hours. So we start early in the day. We done by the, by the mid-afternoon, but... You got to be built for that. And I think these days, they probably ain't making those kids do that. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of things that probably won't fly at that camp that flew back then. Because like I said, we went to, we was dealing with hood counselors. We had gangbangers out there. You know, like, you're not going to have a good time at that camp if you ain't have some type of heart. Be real with you. But if I was a parent, I would send my kid to that. I would send my kid to that camp. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just an experience that I can't explain, but I'm trying to. Like, you took me right out of my element, out of the city, and you put me in the middle of the woods. Now, I'm not going to lie. It was scary. Those woods are scary. When you coming out of coming out of the city, and you, you know what I'm saying, they put you in the middle of the woods, put you in nature. You're dealing with all kinds of stuff out there. And them camp stories that they have, Yeah, in the movies, you know how they like to scare the kids with the camp stories and the kids be scared to go. To Yo, those stories that they told, oh my God, what well, have you scared to death? Have you scared to death? But I'm going to end this video soon. But let me know in the comments if you want to hear more like this because I'm not going to lie. I have some good stories at camp, especially my second year. You know what I'm saying? Um, But my first year, great year. That was like the best year because we did all the activities we were supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? My second year was a little different because the times of New York changed. You know what I'm saying? Within a year, the gangs grew. When I went my second year, it was it was gang. As a matter of fact, it was a lot of bloods my second year there. But 
And it was, you know, it was just crazy. But I'm going to just say this, man. If you want to hear more about the fresh air front, because like I said, man, OG stuff right here, man. I'm going to show one more time. Yo, great times, man. So I'll get back at y'all.